One week until Thanksgiving and food pantries are a lifeline for more and more families in need, like this one on Webster Avenue, and they need your help. And it's more importante por trabajo, ¿sí? Sí, sí, sí. Pix11 News met John Lino in a Bronx pantry line Thursday morning. Lino tells us in Spanish he is a single dad with a five-year-old daughter, an immigrant from Honduras, now living in a Bronx shelter since April, struggling to find a job and feed his daughter. Right now, this pantry is a lifeline. My daughter and me, we don't have no social security. We're not classifying for nothing. Yeah, so yeah, for yeah. week, I'm not classifying for nothing. Lino is just one of thousands who come to this organization for help. It's called POTS which stands for Part of the Solution, a nonprofit helping families with not just food, but health care and job placement. This is the front lines. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really amazing what Parts does here. I actually used to come with my sons and volunteer here. Robin Hood's CEO, Rich Bouri, says it's places like POTS that catch families who fall through the cracks of the system. He says that's why Robin Hood is giving POTS over a quarter of a million dollars. Getting money into the hands of people who need it is not only is it good human, it's good being a good human being, it's also good public policy. According to Robin Hood's latest poverty tracker, a survey of poverty that takes an annual snapshot, checking in with the same 4,000 households quarter after quarter for several years. It discovered that the number of families receiving food from a food pantry more than doubled between 2019 and 2020. Also adversely impacted were communities of color, low-wage workers, and families with young children. 39% of New Yorkers face food hardship, including about 46% of Bronx residents. Whether it's through helping people connect with SNAP benefits, helping people connect with a job, helping people avoid eviction. Edgardo Paulette is a Bronx father of three who says he feels compassion for Lino because he sees himself. Lino's story has been a very um, touch me. Paulette came here for help too and hopes to share his experience and hope with Lino. His message, it will get better. If you want more information about POTS or Robin Hood, if you want to help, just go to pix11.com slash Monica or Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Monica Morales TV. In the Bronx, Monica Morales, PIX11 News. All right, with that, let's turn the PIX11 News at 6. Live from 42nd and 2nd, this is New York's very own PIX11 News at 6. The event that brought us the court today should never have occurred. Those events were and are the result of a process that was corrupt to its core, one that was all too familiar to black people in 2021. Justice tonight for two men wrongly convicted of killing Malcolm X. Muhammad Aziz addressing the courtroom today before the judge officially granted the motion more than five decades since he was found guilty of a crime he did not commit. Thanks so much for joining us for the Pixel of the News at 6. I'm Tamson Fidel. I'm Corey Chambers. The other exonerated man, Khalil Islam, died before his name was eventually cleared, but his son spoke today. Pixel of Ayanna Harry was there for the emotional reactions. Ayanna. Tamsin and Corey, these wrongful convictions deeply impacted Muhammad Aziz, Khalid Islam, and their families, especially their children. So many of them lost hope in the criminal justice system years ago. For them, today's exonerations were both bitter and sweet. I do not need this court, these prosecutors, or a piece of paper to tell me I'm innocent. For five decades, Muhammad Aziz was the convicted assassin of civil rights leader Malcolm X. That all changed today. Aziz's friends and family gathered in a Manhattan courthouse for the emotional moment. The joint motion is hereby granted. And the record. The 1965 assassination of Malcolm X has long been the source of doubt and confusion. Three men were convicted of the shooting, but only one confessed. The other two, Muhammad Aziz and Khalil Islam, said they were innocent from the start. The event that brought us to court today should never have occurred. Actually proving their innocence in a courtroom took half a century and a groundbreaking documentary that prompted the Manhattan District Attorney to re-examine the case. It is clear these men did not receive a fair trial. Much of the original evidence in the case is now lost, including the shotgun that killed Malcolm X, 
all of the original police investigators and trial attorneys passed away. The Manhattan DA did find FBI documents that were kept secret during the original trial. Many of those documents were exculpatory. None of them were disclosed to the defense. Today, DA Cy Vance apologized to Muhammad Aziz and to the family of Khalil Islam. Islam passed away in 2009. We asked his youngest son if that apology was enough. No, it's really not. Um, it's too much. It's too much uh, discomfort, uh, sadness. News of today's exoneration resonated deeply with Alvin Bragg. As a student of the civil rights uh, movement, uh, it, it is it's personally, you know, very kind of emotional. In January, Bragg will become Manhattan's first black district attorney, vowing to strengthen the office's conviction review process. It's never too late to right a wrong, right? I mean, in some ways, the force of time and the fact that it's been allowed to fester that long uh, makes it all the more important uh, to, to address it. And today, one of the daughters of Malcolm X, Ilyasa Shabazz, she told the New York Times now she hopes the full truth around her father's death can finally come to light. Reporting live outside the criminal courthouse in Lower Manhattan, Ayanna Harry, PIX11 News. I'll tell you, justice mm -hmm. delayed. It's finally happening, but my goodness, it's taken so long. Sure Ayanna, has. thank you. Well, tonight, police searching for two gunmen who injured four people while shooting out of the sunroof of a black SUV. It happened on Burke Avenue in the Williamsburg section of the Bronx. This new surveillance video shows innocent people running and ducking for cover as the shooters opened fire. Police say at least two of the victims were innocent bystanders. The NYPD's community affairs officers actually visited some of the victims in the hospital to offer their own support. They're just very happy that we would show up and show that we care in just that way. We've already been there in an investigative way, but now to show back up to the hospital and just let them know that, hey, we're just here to put a smile on your face. Recent NYPD crime stat show overall crime is down in the city. The captain says he is not looking at numbers, but the lives that are affected by gun violence across the city. By the way, anyone with information is asked to contact police and help them out. And new at 6 tonight, eight children were tased while at school this afternoon. This happened in Queens. Yeah, two men in their 20s used a taser to strike a fence where the students were, uh, they were actually there. Yeah, this happened at the Ridgewood School campus on Seneca Avenue. The kids between the ages of 8 and 10 say they felt a slight vibration. They were taken to the hospital, though, just as a precaution. Yeah, the suspects then took off. Police still investigating. Well, New York State lawmakers currently working on what could be another scathing report on former Governor Cuomo's time in office. There will be no impeachment, but the report may provide more details into the sexual harassment allegations, nursing homes, and other possible misconduct. Today, Cuomo's attorney, Rita uh, Galvin, says that she wants an advanced copy of the Assembly's report, and she again went after Attorney General Letitia James, demanding James recuse herself from any more investigations and matters related to Cuomo since she is now running for governor. They have to step away because someone running for governor has every motivation to prolong that investigation to ensure that former Governor Cuomo is in a political threat. Many members will be back working on the report tomorrow. Well, a death row inmate's life has been spared. The Oklahoma governor granted clemency to Julius Jones earlier today. Jones now faces life in prison without the possibility of parole. He was convicted of murder for the shooting death of businessman Paul Howell back in uh, 1999 during a carjacking. Jones has maintained his innocence, saying he was framed by a co-defendant. His case attracted widespread attention in recent years with huge crowds rallying for him and celebrities and expressing their own support. Jury deliberations are all ending for a uh, third day in the Cal Rittenhouse trial without a decision. The defense making another request today for a mistrial based on a request from the jury to rewatch video from the case. Meanwhile, the judge has banned MSNBC from the courthouse. He says an employee tried to follow the jury bus and photograph them. The network denies that claim. The Biden administration halting enforcement of the COVID-19 vaccine requirement for businesses as litigation over the issue continues tonight. The decision comes after a court ruling ordered OSHA to stop enforcing the vaccine mandate for businesses with more than 100 employees. The Justice Department saying it plans to fight back against that court order. Our message to businesses right now is to move forward with measures that will make their workplaces safer. 
Say the requirement will only make the workforce shortage worse, but dozens of health care groups agree with the Biden administration saying businesses should still implement the vaccine requirement to slow the spread of COVID ahead of the holiday season. All right, New Yorkers know the real start of the holiday season begins with three words. Mm. Gridlock, mm. alert, day. <laughs> Today marks the first one of the holiday season. Yeah, and that means, of course, that traffic volume is so heavy, backups can really get serious, and you probably notice if you've, uh, if you've been out. But with the traffic comes the joy of shopping, festivals, and dare we say the magic of the holidays. <laughs> PIX 11's James Ford is live in Midtown on foot with the story. Hi there, James. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not in this. And yeah, you mentioned gridlock. Okay, here you go. But plenty of New Yorkers are saying what you see here is the price you pay for what you see here. Yeah, like this nice new winter wonderland scene and other new developments happening as the city continues to open up. But it is a contrast. Call it a tale of two holidays. This one and this. Well, it's just, it was great just to just back to some type of normalcy, so I'm, I'm excited. The sounds, sights, and sales of Union Square Holiday Market. It's one of many holiday traditions that had to cancel last year, but are back this year. There was no year ago for us, actually. Our business was just done. I mean, there were no outdoor markets. Each one of the dozens of booths in this market represents anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars rent or more according to vendors and they have to take in more than that in sales it's a big bounce back that the city says is needed and can happen thanks in a big way to vaccinations helping to open the city back up to tourists from the u.s and abroad where was it from germany there are uh, a few a few um, are closed so uh, where we were uh, last year, uh, last time we were here. So, but it's quite normal. 80%, I said. <laughs> to get closer to 100%, the city needs people like them, especially international tourists. They make up about 20% of all visitors in typical years, but account for 50% of the $47 billion in spending. And business and tourism leaders are promoting it citywide. It's not just Manhattan that's back. There are so many things to do across all five boroughs. As part of the city's return, more than 30 major events in all five boroughs are either back after taking last year off or are brand new. But that also means that something else is back, traffic. Today is the first gridlock alert day of the holiday season. So just a little history, I created gridlock alert days. Uh, the fact that we have gridlock alert days means that a lot of people are returning. The last statistics I looked at, cars were about 98% of, quote, normal, and uh, trucks were 106, 107% of normal. And Sam Schwartz, former transportation commissioner who first coined the term gridlock, and there's some gridlock there. He says that today, though, is the first of increasing gridlock days. So starting tomorrow, yeah, as people start to leave for the holidays, that volume, this volume, will just increase straight through Thanksgiving. Sorry. Reporting live from Midtown, I'm James Ford, PIX11 News. Oh, James, thank you. <laughs> well, here's another sign of the holidays. Get a look at uh, Macy's brand new holiday window display in Tampa. Yeah, not us. <laughs> not me fixing my hair. <laughs> there oh, is. there, that's much better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking about that coming up. Plus, a, a Brooklyn subway station has a new name to honor the surrounding community when we come back.
The Brooklyn subway station now has a new name. The Haitian community is celebrating the change. Yeah, Pixel's Michelle Ross has more on the honor of Haitian heritage. It's a proud day for Haitians in Brooklyn. With big smiles, waving their flags with pride, they're celebrating the newly named New Kirk Avenue subway station, which now includes Little Haiti. I feel so proud because growing up, and I'm trying not to get emotional, we were bullied and harassed so much because we were so proud of our country. And it's an historic day, too. On November 18th, 1803 was the Battle of Vertier, the last major battle of the Haitian Revolution, with Haitians defeating French troops. That victory ultimately led Haiti to become the world's first free black republic, okay, second to the United States. Assembly member Rodney Spichot Hermelin introduced legislation to get the new name. With $250,000 allocated in state funding, the MTA has updated signage and will change its audio system to include Little Haiti. Haitians in the neighborhood are honored but have not forgotten about troubles back in their home country. I really appreciate what's going on here, but I would love the same thing is going on right here. I want it to be in my country too, you know what I'm saying? Because we are really, really suffering. Political unrest and natural disasters have plagued Haiti for years. Their president was assassinated in July, and the next month, a 7.2 magnitude earthquake killed thousands. Despite these troubles, the spirit of the Haitian people is not broken America. as they celebrate the present and hope for better days in the future. In Flatbush, Michelle Ross, PIX11 News.